Starting October 16, 2024, the EPA's Light and Copper Rule Revisions, also known as LCRR, under the authority of the Safe Drinking Water Act, required all community and non-transient non-community public water suppliers to create an inventory of their service lines. By November 15, 2024, these public water suppliers were also required to send consumers a service line material consumer notice if the consumer was served by one of three types of service lines. One, a lead service line. Two, a galvanized service line that requires replacement. Or three, a service line where the material is unknown but may be lead. If you are watching this video, you have likely received a consumer notice from your local water supplier notifying you that the material of your service line is one of these three categories. This video will walk you through what this notice means and what actions you can take to reduce your possible exposure to lead if you are served by a lead service line. Understanding service lines and lead risk. What is a service line? A service line is the pipe that connects the water main in the street to the plumbing in your home or building. Service lines can be made of lead, galvanized steel, or non-lead materials such as copper or plastic. Service line ownership. Service line ownership can vary based on your water system and can impact how you may be financially responsible for service line replacements. There are two common configurations of service line ownership. As shown in this graphic, in split ownership configurations, the water system will own the service line from the water main to the curb stop. The remainder of the service line is owned by the homeowner. In some cases, the homeowner is financially responsible for any problems or replacement of their portion of the service line. In the second configuration, the entire length of the service line will belong to the water system or the property owner. In this scenario, most of the time, the owner of the service line is entirely responsible for the replacement of service lines containing lead. Your water supplier should explain this in their consumer notice. You should reach out to your water supplier directly if you have questions. How does lead get into your drinking water? Sources of drinking water in Massachusetts do not have lead over the lead standard. However, lead can enter drinking water when plumbing materials that contain lead corrode or deteriorate. This happens most commonly in water that has high acidity or low mineral content in pipes or other fixtures that contain some amount of lead. Lead may be found in pipes, pipe fittings, solder, plumbing fittings, or other fixtures, but typically the most significant source of lead in water is from lead service lines. Your water supplier may treat their water through a process called corrosion control to reduce corrosion of service lines. Water suppliers test their consumer's water frequently to confirm that the performance of their corrosion control and optimize it as needed. Why would lead in my drinking water matter? According to the Centers for Disease Control, CDC, and US EPA, there is no safe level of lead in drinking water. Exposure to lead in drinking water can cause serious health effects in all age groups, especially pregnant people, infants, both formula-fed and breastfed, and young children. Some of the health effects to infants and children include decreases in IQ and attention span. Lead exposure can also result in new or worsened learning and behavior problems. The children of persons who are exposed to lead before or during pregnancy may be at increased risk of these harmful health effects. Adults have increased risks of heart disease, high blood pressure, kidney, or nervous system problems. Walking you through your consumer notice. Pictured here are examples of the three types of notice you may have received. A confirmed lead service line, a galvanized requiring replacement service line, or a service line of an unknown material that may be lead, as shown at the top of your notice. We will go through each section of these three sample notices, pointing out their commonalities and their differences. The introduction of each notice informs you that the water systems are now required to inventory their water service line materials to identify any water service lines that contain or may be lead. Here, you will find a short description of why your service line material has been flagged if it is or may contain lead. Next, you will find a paragraph explaining the health effects of lead exposure as previously described in this video. There is no safe level of lead in drinking water. Below the health effects section, you will find a list of steps you can take to reduce exposure to lead in drinking water. We will briefly go over these steps later in the video. At the bottom of your notice, your water supplier will have included at least one method to contact them, such as a phone number, an email, or a website. 
If your notice does not contain the water supplier's contact information in this section or anywhere else in the notice, please visit the Drinking Water Program Public Notification and Emergency Contacts website at the bottom of the webpage to find the contact information of your PWS for any questions regarding your notice. Once navigating to the website, scroll to the bottom and click the link to the Excel spreadsheet titled PWS Active Sources in Contact Spreadsheet under Additional Resources to find contact information for your PWS. Lead and galvanized requiring replacement service lines. For customers with confirmed lead service lines, you will be provided with information on the ownership status of your service line. For customers with galvanized requiring replacement service lines, you will be informed that your public water system has determined that a portion of your service line has been made from galvanized material and may have absorbed lead. The reason a galvanized service line would need to be replaced is because galvanized service lines are steel or iron piping, which have been dipped in zinc to prevent corrosion and rusting. When these pipes are connected downstream of lead service lines, the connection of these two dissimilar metals, lead and galvanized steel or iron, can cause further corrosion and cause lead to be absorbed into the zinc coating over time. Even if the lead service line was removed, the galvanized service line may still retain lead. To protect public health, EPA considers a galvanized service line that was either downstream of lead at any point, or may have been, if it is unknown, as a galvanized requiring replacement service line. For customers with either lead service lines or galvanized requiring replacement service lines, you may see a section titled Opportunities to Replace Lead Service Lines, or Opportunities to Replace Galvanized Requiring Replacement Service Lines, respectively. Make sure to read this section carefully, as your service line may have unknown material requiring identification in addition to lead or galvanized material. Your water supplier will also inform you of any financing options for service line replacement, if there are any available, in this section. Homeowners are also encouraged to contact their home insurance company regarding any information they have on insurance solutions. Lead Status Unknown Service Lines Unknown service line notices differ, as they have a section titled Opportunities to Verify Lead Service Materials. Your notice may inform you on which portion of your service line is unknown, or if the material of the entire service line is unknown. Some water suppliers may only have records of the material for part of the service line, which causes partial unknowns. If your notice does not mention if a portion is unknown or if the whole service line is unknown, you should contact your water supplier for more information prior to trying to identify your service line. If the service line is unknown on the public water supplier's side, your public water supplier will have to develop a plan to identify the service line material, as identifying the public portion often requires digging to examine the service line. Consumers can contact their public water supplier if they would like to discuss this more. If the service line is unknown on the consumer side, you may be able to identify your service line on your own. How to identify your service line. There is a simple tool that the EPA has developed to help homeowners identify the material of their service lines called the Protect Your Tap, a quick check for lead guide. Scan this QR code to go to the EPA website to access this tool. After you have identified your service line material, you can contact your water supplier to let them know what the material is. Check your consumer notice for methods to contact them. This could be through email, phone number, or the MA Lead Service Line Inventory application if they are signed up. The MA Lead Service Line Inventory application is a website that consumers can visit and fill out a quick form to let their water supplier know what the material their service line is. You can even send in a photo of your service line for them to review. Please see this video for further information on how to identify your service line. Testing for lead in drinking water. If you would like to test your drinking water to learn if you have any detectable levels of lead, contact your PWS to ask about testing services and financing options. If your PWS does not offer testing, refer to state certified labs for testing options by scanning this QR code. When using state certified lab testing options, they may cost anywhere between $15 to $100 and are the homeowner's responsibility to pay. How to reduce possible lead exposure while waiting for results. There are several ways to reduce your lead exposure from service lines and plumbing made of lead or containing lead when waiting for your results. The EPA recommends the following actions. As stated before, lead has not been found in any Massachusetts sources of water. 
Lead is a contaminant that could enter drinking water from service lines and plumbing. Run your water to flush out lead. Please note that areas prone to drought or currently experiencing scarcity of water may not recommend this option. Please contact your public water supplier for more information on your area's drought status. Use only cold, fresh water for drinking, cooking, and preparing baby formula. Do not boil water to remove lead. Instead, use a filter certified by National Sanitation Foundation, NSF, to remove lead. Clean your faucet's aerator. Identify and replace plumbing fixtures containing lead. If your home was built before the lead ban in 1986, your home may have lead piping. Other sources of lead are copper pipes containing lead or tin solder. We recommend these homeowners check their premise piping for lead pipes for replacement. Please contact your PWS for more information. Have your child's blood tested for lead. Contact your health provider for more information. For more information, please refer to the steps you can take to reduce exposure to lead in drinking water section of your notice and the links provided in this section. Conclusion. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about your consumer notice. For additional guidance, please contact your water supplier as listed in the bottom of your notice. For additional resources on lead and drinking water, please visit your water supplier's website, the EPA's basic information about lead and drinking water page, or MassDEP's Consumers Frequently Asked Questions about the LCRR Service Line Inventory webpage. Thank you for listening and helping MassDEP's mission to keep public drinking water safe for all Massachusetts consumers.